there. You it's know. a good story. Yeah, so, but anyway, so I, I look for all of the props. 27 Street, they have beautiful flowers or they have miniature little. Um, so I, I, I gather up everything and then I, I, I set it up. And it usually, for instance, um, in the Vanitas that's in the back there, um, this photograph, excuse me, this photograph um, is in the back there. And so this was part of my Vanitas series. And I, I mean, I collected, um, you know, the pipe is from Amsterdam and the little glass and, and the, um, the pearls are all my own, um, which I got from my mother. And this is actually a note to my mother. I was very close to her. So it's the Vanitas photograph. It's called mm -hmm. Reliquary, and they're secreted little boxes. And so there's a little part of my, my mother in there. And then the, um, this is a, this beautiful little scale um, National Gallery in, in Washington, D.C. And I was looking at a veneer because everyone looks at veneers. <laughs> and uh, I saw the same exact scale because the French, you know, went to war with, with Holland and possibly the scale. And then the sphere, I knew I was going to have a, a sphere. And I thought, well, technically, a uh, box that I use. I use strobe lights, and so I didn't want that to happen. So I researched and found a diamond window. So then I put the diamond window in front of my light source, so that in the sphere. So, so it, it 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 takes a lot to gather and then to marry them all together, make sure they're all cohesive. Uh, uh old master paintings in your work, obviously, but you know, have you seen in other, you know, parts of the history of photography how other... I'm so glad that Paulette is talking about how the act, you know, with us all having the possibility of taking a photo can be captured. Hi, I mean, the early inventors' relationship to time and light and uh, the objects and their relationship in terms of technology, color photography, you, they're fragile and you hold up to the light. They were in brief photography. These are not collages. Yes. Um, so I, I just wanted to bring that um, to what we have to do. Um, the, the great, he was also a great photographic teacher. He'd say to his students, Go look at something. You think inspiration comes from nowhere? It comes from somewhere. Go find your inspirations. <laughs> um, but, you know, photography has always had this reciprocal relationship with art. At the beginning, many of the great photographers were trained as artists. Which was the dominant form of photography through the 19th and 20th centuries, couldn't draw. He was hopeless. And that's why he wanted to invent a machine that could draw, because he couldn't. But as the camera evolved, more and more artists used it. And we see the impact on the Impressionists, you know, with hands. But also, they were um, things much, I have to wake my students up. <laughs> um, but not you guys. Your brother told that he made pictures in 1835, including flowers and photographs and things. But in 1839, um, the Frenchman Daguerre um, announced on January 7th he, at a very learned institution, he, his invention of photography was announced. Talbot, who had put his um, photo graphic drawings and his photographs in the draw, and his mother had kept on telling him, he quickly hurries. In order to announce a new invention, you have to get a slot in a learned society. So the first time he could present his photography, his invention, was January 21st. So between Daguerre on January 7th and Talbot on the 21st, Cezanne was born on the 19th. <laughs> and I always felt, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs>
That's great. Yeah. So there's been a reciprocal to this very day between. And I won't have to mention my bridge and Mary and <laughs> the body in motion oh. and all of that, because most of you know that artists had gotten involved how animals and humans moved. Um, the Greeks did better. And then you had centuries of people not knowing how to paint the human body in motion. And that is the opposite of still life, but it is very central to the history of art. And photography was very important. You know, you touched on this idea of color for the first time and, and how contemporary these photographs are now, how large scale we can, we can print in photography and color photography. You know, Paulette, how do you bring this contemporary touch to the still life, you know, history of painting and photography itself? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, um, I guess, you know, when I first started, um, it was maybe two, um, 2008, um, I, when I first decided to, to, to start on this journey of, of creating uh, these images, I just always thought that they were going to be contemporary because I'm contemporary. <laughs> so, you know, and, and it's just that I fell in love with this genre. And for, for instance, I mean, large because, you know, to the naked eye, you can't really see the little insects' legs or the insides of, of a flower, but you could if you printed them up to 55, 55. So I wound up getting a different <laughs> camera so it had more pixels in the detail. Um, so it's, um, you know, I just always thought of them as contemporary. Absolutely, yeah. but I, I also feel like they have this sense of contemporary, even though you're looking at this still life that's clearly influenced, it has these touches of, you know, modern day vases, as, like you see behind here, you know, you have your flowers that, that you grow in your own garden even, um, right. and the, the richness of the prints that, that you do um, is something that only, you know, if you but I want to say a couple years, you could even have that technical aspect of how deep and committed and, and striking that, that these prints are. Um, and, you know, also what kind of challenges, I mean, we've talked about the birds getting loose in your apartment, but oh, beyond that, um, you know, what are those challenges of, of translating that old genre to photography and, and expressing your own unique style? Well, I think that um, each piece is, it is, is a challenge. I mean, by the way, this is, this is a little table from my Santa Fe days. And um, I do put actually elements and little secreted, some of the, they have letters and I write love letters inside, or I, I write on the leaves, or I, I put these little secrets within my, um, in my photographs. Um, but a lot of the challenges are the flowers are are, are, are are very, very tricky because I, you know, I, I get them whether these are, I, I grew these tulips. We, my husband, Paul, over here, um, we, we have a house in Litchfield, Connecticut now. And so I decided I was going to have my own garden. And so I grew these Dutch tulips and I grew those values over there um, and um, so uh, the tricky part of flowers is that as soon as you cut them you know I usually put them in the refrigerator and then I cut them and they're already dying and so what I try to do is I I get the set in perf you know so it's as perfect as possible and then I bring in the flowers and there's you know buckets of flowers all over and um, and then I cut them and I arrange them and I they're just so hard because, you know, the, the stems are drooping or the leaves are dying or um, it is, you know, a lot of times I'll finish a photograph and I'll say, you know, I'm never going to do flowers again because it's just so hard. But of course I always do because they're so beautiful. <laughs> but um, I, I think the challenge is um, not so much the lighting. I mean, I did, yep. you know, with a, a window or, or, you know, a candle, although mm -hmm. Let me know if this is correct, but didn't Carvaggio think that... <laughs> <laughs> Except he killed someone, so, you know, that's also fun. That's playing God. Yeah.